You'll notice with this quilt that it's broken into four quadrants. When you fold it in quarters, it looks like this. And we're gonna basically put four of these together to make the whole quilt. You can either break it into quadrants like this, that'll look like this, or you can take the picture and just go row by row and put it together row by row. Whichever way is easier for you, that's the way to do it. They're both gonna come out with the, both the same product looking like the Carpenter Star. So neither way is wrong. You just pick the way that's best for you. So let's get started. We are going to set that aside so we can get our fabrics. We've got a layer cake that you've chosen and we've got white squares or cream, whichever one you chose, to go along with those patterned prints. Now we're gonna take these, there are 42 in here and we don't need but 32. So we're gonna take 10 of these out. So flip through your pack and take out the least favorite 10 in the pack for you. So sometimes, well, almost all times, there's a duplicate somewhere in the stack. So if you wanna take out the duplicates, that's a great thing to do. Uh, I'm gonna pick mine. The bad thing is, is I like them all, so I'm gonna have a hard time picking them. But I'm gonna pick 10 out, and then I'm gonna come back, and I'm going to do the first step. Okay, I've picked my 10 least favorites out of the stack. Now what we've done is we've set them aside. We're not gonna use them for this, for this project, but don't throw them away. There's something you can do with them. There's a lot of things you can do with them. If you quilt already and you know something else to do with it, do whatever you want with it. But you could also take them and cut them. This is a 10 inch square. You could take these and cut them into five inch squares, straight down the middle and straight down the middle and do a miniature of this same quilt and just get some more white fabric and do the same, cut it into squares. But this is what we're gonna start with on this one. So my point is don't throw those, those 10 aside that you put aside, don't throw those away. There'll be other projects to use those for in the future. But when we've got our 32 picked out, now we're gonna get started. We're gonna take 16 of them and put them aside. So I'm gonna take 16 and stack them over here different prints. And then when I've got my 16 pulled out, I'm just gonna pick two of them. And I'm gonna put them right sides together. Let me bring you down to the table so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, you've got your 16 squares pulled out. You're gonna put them two, two together, right sides together. And then you're gonna draw a line from one corner to the other corner, starting here and going here. You're gonna draw a line with just a mechanical pencil. And then you're gonna set this aside. We're gonna pin those in, I mean, we're gonna sew those in just a minute. We're gonna take another two. We're gonna put them right sides together. Make sure they're lined up perfectly. And we're gonna do the same thing, corner to corner, we're gonna draw that line. And since we had 16 squares, we're gonna make eight sets like we just did. So we should end up with two sets, two squares, eight times, which is the 16 we pulled out. And once we've drawn all of our lines, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch on each side of that line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the sewing machine, sew a quarter inch on each side, and then we're gonna cut on the line we just drew. We are not sewing on that line, we're sewing on either side of that line and we're cutting on that line. So let's take them to the sewing machine and do the next step. Okay, we're over at the sewing machine. We're gonna take the first set that we drew those lines on, and we're gonna take that line that we drew on will be our quarter inch mark. So we're gonna sew on each side of that quarter inch mark. 
All right, and we're going to sew a quarter inch on this side of the line. feed itself through while I'm doing it instead of pushing it through. And then you could cut it right here and do the other side. But for ease purposes, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna take the next set and I'm gonna do the quarter inch line on the same side. All the way down that knot sewing on that line we drew but on each side of that line so when I get I should have eight sets so when I get them sewn on that one side I'll pull them out and I'll cut them apart like that and then I'll flip them around and I'll sew that line on the other side of that line we drew quarter inch on its that side You can do them one at a time if that's easier for you. Or you can string them together like I normally do. I'm only doing two at a time this time just to show you. But then I'm gonna place this other one on here. And I'm gonna sew down that side a quarter inch off of that line we drew. So by the time we get these done, we're going to have half square triangles. Both sides will be patterned sides. And when you've got it sewn on both sides of that line we drew, quarter inch off each side, we're going to take it over to the cutting table and we're going to cut down that line we drew. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, at this point, we've got our squares together. We've taken 16 printed squares and we've set them in stacks of two. So now we've got eight stacks of twos. We've drawn that line diagonally across the middle after we lined them up. And then we sewed a quarter inch on each side of that line. That line is gonna serve as our cutting mark, not our sewing line. So now that we've got this, we're going to take and put this ruler on that line. Once we've got it on that line, we're gonna cut. I'm gonna cut on that line that we drew and I'm gonna set these apart in another stack. Now you remember, you can do this several at a time, but I'm gonna do them one at a time just to show you. Again, I'm cutting on that line that we drew. And I'm gonna do this with all eight sets that we just sewed together. And that's that step. Once you've got all these to this state, you're going to open them up and take them to the ironing board and iron them open. You can do seam to one side or seam open. Seam open takes a little bit longer, but it does make it a little bit flatter. So you'll take it and iron it either like that or like that, whichever way you choose. And here we are at the ironing station. We're gonna take it and we're either going to iron it like that with our seam like that, or we're gonna open it up. I'm just gonna iron mine to the side. So 
I'm gonna iron it like that. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. You can set your seam. Sometimes it's easier to do that. And then iron it open. But you're gonna do this with all of the ones we just sewed. So you should have eight that look like this. Once we get done with this, we can clip these little dog ears off down here. That's what those are called, the little hangover pieces. We're gonna do the same thing we did before with these. We're gonna have one colored and one white, and we're gonna have 16 of these. So there's my first one. I'm gonna take another one, a colored and a white. I'm gonna draw the diagonal line like we did before. I'm gonna set it to the side. I want 16 of these sets. Line it up perfect. Draw the line from one corner to the other corner. Put it in my pile over here. And when I've got 16 of these sets, then I'm gonna stop and we're gonna do the next step. I'm still drawing my lines. But when I've got my lines drawn, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the other set where I had the two prints together. I'm gonna to draw this line, then I'm gonna sew a quarter inch over here and a quarter inch over here on each side of that. Then we're gonna sew down this line where we on the side of the line we drew and then we're going to cut on this draw line and we're going to end up with these like we did a minute ago only instead of print and print they're going to be one side's white and one side's print or one side's cream whatever fabric you chose but one side's going to be a solid and one side's going to be a print and we're doing 16 sets like this We've got our first set of the white with the print put together. We're gonna sew quarter inch on each side of this line, just like we did before. can string them together like we did before or you can do them one at a time like this that's your preference I'm gonna do this step to all of these that I've got in this stack here which should be 16 then we're going to take it to the cutting table and we're going to cut on that line just like we did before. So you can do them one at a time or you can do them like this where you string them together. Do the other side. Either way, you're going to sew a quarter inch on each side of that line you drew on all 16. So I'm going to continue doing this, and when I come back, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, if you remember just a minute ago, we cut these apart for the colors on both sides, and then we opened them up like this. We're going to do the same thing with this stack. We're going to take it and we're going to cut it down the line that we drew. And then we're going to take it to the ironing board and we're going to iron them open like this. So 
So you should have all of these to this state by the time we're done. And we're gonna iron these open when we get them cut apart. Okay, to recap where we're at at this point, we should have 16 squares that are half print, half print. So 16 squares like this, and they should be about nine and a half inches wide, squared, and then 32 that are half white, half print. So 32 of these, and they also are about nine and a half inches squared. So now we've got some pieces in this quilt that are just solid white squares. And there's actually one, two, three, four times four, so 16 of these that are just white squares. So we're gonna take these squares and we're gonna cut them down to nine and a half. Because if you remember, we put a seam down these. So we lost some yardage in this seam allowance. So now we have to make this match this size. And this should be nine and a half. This is 10, so we need to make it nine and a half. So we're gonna take those extra whites that we had remaining that we didn't use, and we're gonna cut them down to nine and a half inches. So let's do that. So here are our 10 by 10 inch squares that we're gonna turn into nine and a half. So we're gonna cut a half an inch off of one side Without moving it, we're gonna cut a half an inch off of this side. And now we've got a nine and a half inch square that should be the same size as the ones we've just cut and sewn together. So we're gonna do that with all 16 of them. You can do them more than one at a time if you want. Just make sure you line them up straight or if you're more comfortable doing them one at a time, then cut them one at a time. It's up to you. I'm gonna cut about four or five at a time. Make sure they're lined up good and straight. Scratch them a little bit to the side to make them if they're not lined up right. Put them on your ruler to where they read 10 by 10. Cut a half inch off one side. And a half inch off the other side. Put them to the side and do the same with the remaining right white squares. Half an inch off and half an inch off. And now they're ready to put together in the square, in the quilt. So we're gonna discard those little pieces we just trimmed off of these. And then we're gonna go over here and look at this quilt. Now you can see this quilt, I folded into a four part section. Each one of these squares, like this right here, if this were to be one square of the quilt, there's four of these made up to make the one quilt. You can either put it together row by row all the way across the top, then the next line, then the next line, then the next line, or you can cut it into four quadrants like I've done here and put it together that way. Totally up to you, both gets the same result, or you can open it up. I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but there's a picture of it in the video too that you can scroll back to. And you could take, and there'll be a picture in the end too, you can take it, if you don't want to do the four quadrant way, you could take it and do it just like this. You've got, let me see if you can see it in the video. You got one, two white squares. Then you've got the colored in the white, 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 and then two whites. And make that whole row. And then come to the second row and make this whole row and sew this row to this row. 
then come here and do this row and sew this row to this row. So you can do it either way. Whichever way makes you more comfortable, do it that way. They both come out with the same result. When you get it all pieced together, you're done. All you have to do then is have it quilted. You can bring it to us and we will quilt it, or you can have someone near you quilt it. That is up to you. But that's as easy as this quilt is. If you have any questions, feel free to message us. We're here to help in any way we can. So we want you to succeed in this quilt making endeavor as much as you do. So if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, that's how you do this quilt. It's fun, it's easy, and it's a beautiful quilt. If it's easier for you, either screenshot this picture or freeze it on your computer or your TV or whatever you're watching this on and just mimic this. Again, you can go row by row or you can go the four quadrants. So either way is easier for you. That's the way to do it. Both come out with a gorgeous quilt. Have fun. Any questions, let us know. We're here to help. Okay, we're going to start constructing this quilt. And we're going to first start in the top left corner of this quilt. The picture you just took from the image you just saw on the screen with the full quilt picture, we're going to mimic that row by row starting at the top left. So I've got two white squares. I'm going to put them lined up along their sides. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam down the side of those two. They should be nine and a half by nine and a half, so it doesn't matter which sides you sew together because they'll all be the same. And so now I've got the first two squares of the top left of the quilt. Then it shows me to take a square with the dark and the white. We want the dark at the bottom left, just like the image of that quilt. And I've got uh, my quilt laying out here on the floor over here, but you've got your image that you just took so that you can see it. So that's what you're gonna copy. You're gonna line these up. You're gonna sew the quarter inch seam allowance. And earlier in the video, I told you that you could cut off those dog ears from when we sewed our squares into the two pieces like these, these are what dog ears are called. You can not sew, you can cut those off or you can leave them. A lot of times I'll cut them off. This time I cut some off and I left some, so it doesn't matter. They're gonna sew up in the seam anyway. But now I've got, see, the dog ear is gone, but it's still there. It just is in the seam, so. If you want to cut those out fine, if you don't want to cut them out fine. But now we've got our first three squares sewn, and now we need to find another one, and this one goes like this. This right here, when you sew these two pieces together, this unit right here is what's called a flying geese. So when you see the colored print versus the solid print, solid prints together and the colored separate, that's a flying geese. So if you hear someone say, we're making a flying geese. That's what we're making right here, this one unit. So we're gonna sew these together just like that quilt shows. And we're gonna do this all the way across row one. Then we're gonna start looking at row two and we're gonna sew row two together just like we sewed row one. Then we're gonna do row three, row four, all the way down the quilt. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to sew row one to row two, row two to row three, all the way down the quilt. And by the time you get to the bottom of those rows sewn together, you're done with the quilt. So quilting is not as hard as a lot of people think it is. Now there are intricate designs and harder designs, but there's also a lot of ones that aren't so bad like this one and i promise you it will be addictive quilting is fun and relaxing so now we've sewn another square to our row now 
then we're gonna do it again. This is another flying geese we're making over here. And what you need to make sure of is these prints, all of them had two of them, or most of them had two prints alike. You want to make sure, and there's different colors. So there's like a green, there's a blue, there's a pink, whatever colors are in your line that you picked. You want to make sure that you kind of divvy out the colors across the whole quilt. So you don't want to end up with the bottom right corner of the quilt of all greens. So kind of mix your colors up. And when you get towards the second, third, fourth row, just make sure you're not piling all your colors together. Kind of map it out a little as you get closer into it. So then we're gonna do one, let's see, this way, yeah. We're gonna sew this one. Then we're gonna grab another one. And we're making another flying geese. Solids together, prints out here, or vice versa. These can be the whites and these can be the prints. But in this case, the whites are together. Make sure they stay lined up. If you need to pin them, then go ahead and pin them. And now that we're at the end, we're gonna put two of the white squares at the end. otherwise and obviously go by the pattern but most all are done a quarter inch seam allowance okay so now that we've got that we've got our entire first row sewn together that's how fast that went and now that we've got this first row together we're going to put it to the side there's markers that you can get which we have here little pins that'll say like one two three or a b c and i'll put a one in here and i'll know that this is row one you don't have to, you can lay it out on a table on the far left side and go to the far right side and know that that's row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, that kind of thing. Whatever method you need, but that's row one. We're done with row one. So now we're gonna start row two, which is a white square and a multicolored square. And they go like that. So we're gonna sew these together and we're gonna do this entire second row. Then we're gonna do the entire third row and the fourth row and the fifth row all the way down the quilt. And then we'll start sewing our rows together. So let's get started. When you're sewing your rows together, it would be good to have your previous row right in front of you to where you can see it because I don't want this print to be also right below it on the next line. I wanna space them out. So I'm gonna make sure that this print is not right here. So I like to follow along that row as I'm sewing the next row. The row after that won't matter because there's a row in between it. Now we're to the point of row one and row two are done. Now you can sew these two together and then do the third one and sew it together. Or you can do row one, row two, row three, row four, like we talked about earlier. Either way you wanna do it. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you this way so that you'll know how to sew the rows together. So I'm gonna take row one and row two, and I'm gonna flip row one on top of row two so that I have them how I need them lined up. 
And then I'm gonna take a pin and pin it at the end right there. I'm gonna come to each seam and I'm gonna hold that seam. I want you to see what I'm doing. Hold that seam just like that so you can see it and roll it to the top. Now I know my seam's matched. I want one seam going this way and one seam going this way. Like I have it here, this one's going that way, this one's going this way. And I'm gonna pin them. If I have them going the same direction, unless you sewed, unless you uh, ironed them flat and open, that's different than just keep them open. But if you ironed them to one side, you want one going this way and one going this way, because if you do them the same direction, it's gonna become real bulky right there and you don't want bulky. So then I'm gonna take the second seam and I'm gonna line it up just like I did the last one. I'm gonna line it, I'm gonna roll it till it meets the top. I'm gonna make sure one side's going one way and one side's going another way. And then I'm gonna pin it. And then it should be flat right there in between. You shouldn't have a buckle or anything like that. If you do, then work it out and kind of space it out. Figure out why, maybe you cut it the wrong size um, or if it's just pinned wrong. So figure that out. Make sure it's flat like that before you move to the next one. Then we're gonna move to the next seam and we're gonna do it again. We're gonna meet those seams, roll it to the top. One seam's going to the left, one seam's going to the right and I'm gonna pin it. When I hold it together, it's flat, there's no bubble. Go to the next seam. We're gonna do this all the way down this row. Line those seams up, roll them to the top. One seam to the left, one seam to the right. Pin it, no bubble. So we're good. We're gonna keep doing this all the way down that quilt the row. And then we're gonna sew all the way down the side we pinned at a quarter inch seam allowance. And when we open it up, all of our seams should match. Here we are at the end of our first row being sewn together to the second row. And I'll show you what it looks like. Excuse me. So now, let me pull you out farther so you can see it. So now when we open up our two rows, row one and row two has been sewn together. They're gonna mimic the top of that other quilt that we just saw. Our lines are gonna be lined up. And then we can iron this and then do the next row and sew the next row to this row. Or you can still do row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, and then put them together. Whichever way is easier for you. I typically go row one, row two, row three, row four, sew them all together. I mean, sew them all individually, and then I'll sew them together at once. But if it's easier for you to do this method, sew in row one and row two together, and then sew row three and add row three, then do that. That way you won't get your rows mixed up. So it's up to you. Both ways are correct. Just whichever way is easier for you. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna iron it. I'm gonna put it to the side and I'm gonna make the next row and I'm gonna iron it when I've sewn it to this as well. Now on to the next row. Once you get done, this is what it should look like. Again, just take a snapshot of one of the images of this quilt in the beginning of the video and just mimic it. Go row by row or quadrant by quadrant, cut it into four squares, whichever way. And that's it. Then you're done. It's that easy. Have fun with it.